Hello, this is Pastor Paul. Welcome to the Lord of Life Lutheran Church Sermon Podcast. We're glad you're here. Each week we provide the sermon from our worship service as a way of sharing the hope we have found in Jesus Christ. To learn more about Lord of Life, please visit our website at www.lordoflife.online. And now, here's this week's message. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 11th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you have sent me. When he said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. To you, God's beloved, who are called to be saints, grace and peace to you from God the Father, and our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. This day can be hard. This day can be hard because even though we are gathered together in worship and know about the promise of Jesus' resurrection, we still feel the sting of death. We still have cries of lament. Why did Baby Reyes, Bob, Bernadine, Rudy, Lyle, Romaine, Sharon, Marlene, Daniel, Gertrude, Nick, Ellen, and all those others that have touched our hearts have to die when they did. Why couldn't we have just a few more moments with them? The lament of time doesn't just come to us because of those who have died, but in our daily choices. We lament that we have to choose between relationships and work, friends and family, family and work, and more. We lament that for almost two years now, we haven't been able to see our friends as much as we'd like to feed each other as a community in mind and spirit around dinner tables as much as we'd like. We lament that we have had to evaluate risk, health risk, more than we ever had to do before. We lament because it's hard to love neighbors who don't seem to love us back. We lament because there are times when life is just so hard. We can't do anything else but lament. And it has been a hard two years. 
Just over 750,000 people in the United States have died from COVID-19. Five million in the world. This COVID reality that we have been living in just seems to me marching on and on. Many faith communities thought that we were going to, including this one, were thought, thought that we were going to have time to lament together last year. But as COVID cases and deaths were increasing all over the world, preventing us from gathering in person. Lament was exchanged for anxiousness, caused not only by unknown a health future, but also an unknown political future, political future, as we faced a very contentious election last November. Our grief and laments have been pushed down by anxiousness, worry, and yes, even frustration. Lament was pushed out of our hearts because thinking and seeing positives were the only ways many of us could convince ourselves to put one foot in front of the other. And now, this year, effective vaccines have allowed us to come together to worship and life to return to some sense of normalcy. And as we glimpse normalcy, mourning and lamenting those who have died rest heavily on our hearts. We want to mourn. We want to allow ourselves to be sad. We want to cry. But unsaid expectations can prevent us. Too many times we feel like we need to buck up and get over it. Can't show our emotions because real men don't cry. And women, we have to be big girls and continue to keep strong and keep faith and smile. Is it okay for believers in Christ and the resurrection to cry? Is it okay to question where Jesus was and is? Yes and yes. Why? Because it is right to have time to acknowledge the weight of all the pain and power of death. It's okay because scripture shows us. Jesus shows it's okay to lament. First, both Martha and Mary cry out in rebuke, Lord, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. In other words, these two faithful women who have listened and knelt at Jesus' feet believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Ask Jesus, Lord, Why weren't you here? We sent a message, called for you even, and you didn't come. Why did you let your friend, our brother, die? Why did death, or as Isaiah quotes, the shroud that is cast over all people, the sheet that is spread over all nations, have to come over Lazarus? Jesus offers no rebuttal, no excuse. Instead, he is greatly moved and can only ask, where have you laid him? And upon hearing the invitation to come and see, Jesus weeps. Jesus, the Son of God, the resurrection and the life, weeps. And if Jesus is weeping, isn't enough permission for us to feel sad, to feel the sting of death, to weep, then who can give us permission? On this day of honor, of remembering the saints who have lived and gone before us, we remember that Jesus wept. Through Jesus Christ, we are given consolation and permission to still weep, even though we know the story, Lazarus' story, Jesus' story, our story, does not end with death. And I think a post I saw on social media says it more poetically than I ever could. Jesus shows us it's okay to cry at the sad parts because he cried. Jesus knew that Lazarus was dead before he got the news, but still 
he cried. He knew Lazarus would be alive again in moments, but still he cried. He knew death here is not forever. He knew eternity and the kingdom better than anyone else could. Yet he wept because this world is full of pain, regret, loss, depression, and devastation. He wept because knowing the end of the story doesn't mean you can't cry at the sad parts. We don't know how long Jesus wept, only that he did. And even when he dried his tears and looked upon the tomb and was again greatly disturbed, possibly weeping some more, Jesus tells those gathered mourning with Mary and Martha to roll the stone away. John doesn't tell us that Jesus dried his tears first before any of this, put a smile on his face, hid his emotions. John only tells us that he poses a question to Martha's protest and then thanks God. I thank you, Father, for having heard me. And in that prayer of thanksgiving, said aloud for others to hear, I think Jesus was saying, I thank you, Father, for seeing my tears, hearing my lament and thankfulness for Lazarus. I thank you, Father, for not taking the pain away that death causes for those living. But I also thank you for not ending the story here. Because by not ending the story here, God has also given us hope as we cry, grieve, and mourn. Through tears and showing all of his emotions to the world, Jesus gives thanks to God. And so today, we give thanks to that God. We give thanks for the saints who have gone before us, especially those who have died recently. We give thanks for their lives, witness, and love. We gather together and welcome each other in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We gather to weep, but also to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our siblings in Christ, to give thanks for their lives, to commend them to our merciful Redeemer and comfort one another in our grief. We remember them and the promises that were spoken at their baptism and our baptism. We give thanks for the promise that one day all will be like Lazarus, full of life and unbound. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. Death, the great equalizer, the devourer of life will be swallowed up forever. For when we were baptized in Christ Jesus, We were baptized into his death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. And until that day, ensure in certain hope of the resurrection, we give thanks that the Lord the one who weeps with us, that the Father through the Son and the power of the Holy Spirit walks with us all the days of our life and forever, ever more. Amen. Thank you for listening today. We are a congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America based in Asbury, Iowa. We are committed to caring for our community and for our world through creative ministry. We'd love to have you join us for worship online each Sunday at 9 a.m. Till then, may God bless you and watch over you in these days ahead.